CataractCoach.com, a rubbery brunescent cataract. This nucleus just does not want to split. This is a case of me operating. I'm going to show you the whole video at 2x, two times normal speed. I want you to see some cases that are more challenging, not cherry-picked. Now look carefully at the conjunctiva. What do you notice? This patient already had a pars plana vitrectomy for a retinal detachment. And you can see that conjunctiva looks like it's a post-surgical. So there's the very dense brunescent cataract. Put some tripan blue dye in. Really not much of a red reflex at all. And let's get the rexus done. Key here, do not make a baby rexus. So we're going to try to get a good size, at least 5 millimeter capsule rexus. Even 5.5 is okay. Good thing we use that tripan blue dye. It really helps to visualize that capsule during this rexus creation. Now we're going to dissect this with um, some BSS away from the capsule bag. And the question is, do you do other techniques? Could you use a femtosecond laser to help soften this up? Maybe. But remember, the more opaque the lens gets, the less penetration of light energy will go in it, right? So I've tilted the lens up out of the capsule bag. You can see that. And we'll put a little extra aliquot of viscoelastic there in the central cornea to protect that endothelium. Here comes a phaco probe. When it buzz in with a phaco probe, chopper behind it, and look at the density of this thing. Just, I'm trapping the nucleus behind and with the chopper behind or the probe in front to really kind of get into it and try to really break off pieces. And you can see the coloring of it. It is pretty brown. It's definitely brunescent. Brunescent, of course, meaning brown. And so we'll chop the pieces off. They just don't want to split so easily. But we'll take our time and take off little pieces at a time. Now, some of you are saying, well, why not just use a, a snare technique or these, little, these loops that can help you split? You can do that, too. Listen, do what makes you happy. But you got to ask yourself, is that your technique? That's what you want to do? Go for it. Many ways of doing this case, all are reasonable. I want to show you a case, though, where I'm doing it by just breaking off little chunks of the nucleus at a time, trying to keep it deeper in the bag, operating at that iris plane or below. And look what we do here. Stop and recoat the endothelium with more dispersive viscoelastic. Protect that cornea. And we'll do chop, chop, and more chop. Look at the yellow, brownish nature of that nucleus. And again, it's rubbery. I don't want to only show you these cherry-picked, beautiful, slick cases that I do here. I want to show you all the cases, including this one where I'm actually struggling a little bit. So, like in the video, it was at 2x normal speed. So the, the surgery itself took for me maybe about 10 or 10 to 11 minutes. And then this video is only about uh, five and a half minutes. So... Um, there's a benefit here of watching it 2x. I know if I just show you the whole video in real time, all my YouTube fans are going to watch it at 2x anyway. So, again, what are we going to do again? Recode endothelium. But this thing just doesn't want to split. Now, could I have done an MSICS technique, the manual's small incision, extracting the whole nucleus? For sure you could have done that too. In this case, we really want to do this technique. Instead, I definitely want to do FACO for this patient for a smaller incision. There is a little bit more to consider here, too, because the patient has had a prior vitrectomy, and that vitrectomy was done a couple years ago. This patient just delayed treatment of the cataract due to COVID issues, and now the patient finally seeks care. So everything looks good here, taking that last bit out of the eye. Again, we are also are using phaco power modulations to minimize the total energy put in the eye. But with that said, we still have to put a significant degree of ultrasonic energy in this eye to emulsify the cataract. So being very cautious as we go in with the IA probe to make sure we have reasonable zonular support. Again, looking or paying attention to that rexus edge to make sure it does not move at all. And we'll be very cautious in removing this. You do remember my pearl for a post vitrectomy eye when you're doing your lens calcs. You know, there's no anterior hyaloid face, correct? No more vitreous. So this IOL may sit a little deeper in the eye than you anticipate, so a little bit of a more posterior effective lens position, or ELP. In that regard, we're going to add a half drop to our IOL power. So if you want to have, if you have calculated a 20.5 for perfect plano and a normal eye, in this eye, because the post me, put in a 21. So adding that half diopter to the IOL power, I think you will be very pleased with that. There's the lens going in the capsule bag. That looks great. And you can see the Rex is an appropriate size. We'll take out the remaining viscoelastic. And this eye certainly is going to have more inflammation. Now, in an eye with a cataract this dense, 
it's okay to have a little bit of corneal edema the next day. I anticipate this patient is going to need a week or two to achieve great vision. The vision, though, the next morning is going to be much better than it was with that brunescent cataract. So sweeping around to make sure there's no retained lens pieces. That looks great. Here comes some triamcinolone. Definitely want to quell the inflammation in this eye. A little antibiotic as well. That's moxifloxacin. And then looking good. A little bit of Wexel with the tetracaine to help keep the eye numb. We'll do a small limbal relaxing incision for treatment of pre-existing astigmatism. And that's a beautiful case.